What's going on everyone, it's Chris from XL Gaming and today we're going to be creating a custom stinger. So in this tutorial we're going to be using Adobe After Effects. After Effects is a um, subscription model that allows you to use Photoshop, Lightroom and so on. But there is a free trial and I'll leave a link down in the description for you to get your hands on one of those. So to get started, what we're going to want to do is create a new composition. A composition is, you can think of it as a canvas. What are we going to put our stuff onto? So, I'm going to call mine Final Render. And my settings will be 1920 by 1080. The frame uh, frames per second will be 60. And the duration, I found two seconds is quite a sweet spot. So, I'm going to leave it at that. So, you don't want it to be too quick and you don't want it to be too long. You want you know, what feels right, and it's around two seconds. If you make it five, six, you know, 10 seconds long, it's gonna take 10 seconds for you to go from this scene to this scene, That's it, it's just too long. So let's click okay on that. I'm gonna grab a fake logo. The bread and butter of animation and After Effects is you keyframe. So at a certain point, you keyframe here and After Effects will know that it needs to be in this position at this point. And you go somewhere down the line in terms of time and you go, right, okay, I'm gonna keyframe here and I've changed the position over here. Now I, I need you to get to over here. And um, what that will do is it will create an animation between this point and this point. So just to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to create a box and I'm going to click on my layer down here, click on P on the keyboard and that will bring up my position. Click on the stopwatch and that creates a keyframe point, an anchor point. I'm going to tell it that it needs to be at 960 by 540. I'm going to go somewhere down the line and click on this um, keyframe anchor point again and say, right, okay, at this point, you need to be over here. So right now, I'm going to go over here, go back to the very beginning, press space bar, and I've transitioned. I've, I've moved the image from here to here, and After Effects has, has created the animation for me. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. Ultimately, that's all we're going to, going to be doing today. We're going to be creating multiple layers and we're going to be transitioning them across the scene. And at some point, 100% of this canvas, this transparent background canvas will be occupied. Now, just to make sure that you have got a transparent background right down here, if you um, hover over it, it'll say toggle transparency grid. I've set mine to, you know, to, to show automatically. You might actually have a black uh, canvas. But uh, if you just click on that, you'll get your, your transparent background. Okay, let's get started. So first things first, we want to create a new layer. So as I said, at some point in time, 100% of our canvas needs to be taken over by our shape. So I'm going to create a, a shape uh, uh, which is much larger than our our background our actual canvas i'm going to click on the layer and click on the little drop down where it says transform and where it says rotation i'm just going to rotate that to about um, 20 degrees ish there or thereabouts i'm going to grab my layer and i'm just going to increase that a little bit sort of that width out so we're just touching either side Okay, there we go. So what I wanna make sure that you've got is the same windows that I've got. I've got effect and presets up over here and I've got effect controls over here. Now to get them, what you wanna do is click on window. You've got effect and presets there. Mine says control uh, plus five. And then right down at the very bottom, you've got effect controls. So I've got both of those windows up. If you don't have the same as me, if you just um, wanna just quickly um, load them up and what I'm going to do on the right hand side where it says effect and presets is I'm going to search fill now underneath generate I've got fill as an option and I'm going to drag and drop that onto my new layer what that's allowing me to do is to create a new select a new color very easily so I've got this color um, to, uh, palette here 
click on that and what I'm going to do is just select a nice grey. Now that we've got our grey background, we're slightly angled. What I'm going to do is click on the layer and click P for position. And then what we're saying is at some point in time, we want to be here. So I'm going to start at the very beginning. And I'm going to say minus 1000. No, way not enough. Bag that all the way. I'm going just off the canvas. So at the very beginning, the very first frame, we are at the zero point and we're just off the canvas. Now I'm going to transition in a little bit. Uh, actually, let's go to the very end. Click on the diamond to the left of the stopwatch. And I'm going to hold shift and drag my layer all the way across and let go. Now what we've done is the exact same thing as what we've done with the uh, rectangle a minute ago or the square. We t uh, told Adobe After Effects, we want you to be here. Now we want you to be here. So if I click spacebar, I've transitioned through. A really powerful tool for us in After Effects is easy easing. And what that allows us to do is create differences in speeds from a point in transition. So um, rather than being at a constant speed all the way through from beginning to end, we can say, right, okay, at the beginning, speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, and we get some really cool effects. So in order for us to do that, what we want to do is select our keyframes by holding shift and press F9. Or you can go to animation, keyframe assist, and press easy ease. Then I'm going to select my layer and click on this graph. Hey, Chris from the future here. And I've just realized when editing the video that I skipped the point and it may not apply to everyone, but I just wanted to come back and do a quick video just to show um, what um, what might happen. So we're just talking about the, um, the graph and how we can speed animations up and, and slow them down. And we've just clicked on this button. Now, some people may not actually view a window that looks exactly like this. And if you right click, you may be pre-selected on edit value graph. I know when, when I first launched Adobe After Effects, I was uh, pre-selected on value graph, which looks something like this. So what you want to do is right click on your layer and select edit speed graph. And then you'll have something similar to what we're looking like in, in a moment. What it does is it says like, what at what point like so right now we've got a smooth transition with our easy ease we slow and then right in the middle is our fastest point so at what point do you want to be your 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 fastest point so i'm going to drag the left hand side in and what we'll find is that we'll have a slow entrance and a quick exit and so likewise we can pull this one in and we'll have a slow entrance a fast middle and then a slow exit and we could probably just increase that a little bit right okay so I'm going to click off the graph and I'm just going to rename my layer so now we've got a really good base for us to get going what I'm going to do is select my layer and press Control D. What that will do is duplicate the layer. I'm going to rename that. And then what this will do is it will create a, an exact like for like keyframe to keyframe. So right now, even though if we could work, clicked on our effect and presets, changed our color, and we selected maybe a uh, bright white. The whole thing looks bright white, but it's just because the layer below it is identical. So if you grab the ends and just bring in a smidge, what that'll do, it'll just bring the sides in. Now, if I zoom in, what we'll have, if I slow it down, is the gray in the background and the white on the, on the top layer now. So, and it will just transition through. And if we duplicate that layer again, rename, and we call this third color. I think you're getting the idea now. What we'll do is, let's just zoom out just so we can see everything. 
go to a point in time. I'm just going to make sure we are still covering 100% of the canvas. Yes. Go to a point in time. Bring in those sides. Select the new color. And I'm going to select that gray again to keep to get that consistency. And if we transition through that. Brilliant. We've got the grounds for our, our, our stinger transition now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my project, open the tab up here, and I'm going to select my logo and just drag that in. Now the problem that we've got is that the logo is showing at all times. So what we'll want to do is you need to create a mat. So that mat is um, only show what's below this when this layer goes over it, but don't show this layer. It sounds confusing, but bear with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the third layer again. I'm going to drag that up top and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it track mat and I'm going to change the logo. So I've dragged it above my logo and I'm going to set my logo to alpha mat. Now, what we've done is we've created another layer, which is the exact same as of our third layer. So as you know, before when we had keyframe to keyframe where it followed through, what we're going to do now is instead of showing that layer, it's going to reveal what's underneath it. So in this case, what's underneath it is our logo or our fake logo. So looking at popular streamers and Ninja in particular, the uh, what you tend to find people do is there's some animation with the logo when there's a transition. So that could be it gets bigger, it gets smaller, it um, you know flies off with the actual animation itself. There's a few things, but in order to just scale our logo, um, you know, larger or smaller, it's quite simple. What we want to do is select our logo, press S for scale and then it's the exact same as what we've done before. So right now, um, at a point, I want it to be, let's say here, I want to click on my stopwatch and say, right, I'm happy with it being 100% at this point, or I want it to be smaller. So at this point, I want it to be 85%. And if I go all the way to the beginning, click on the keyframe here and say, 100% so what it's going to do is between this point and this point it will transition to be 15% smaller so not a massive noticeable, noticeable difference but enough to be um, subtle actually we could probably go a little bit further so let's say 65 so have we zoomed out and fit everything to the page. Oh. We could probably still go further. Let's go 45%. Nice. So the only thing left to do now is to actually export this and attach it to our OBS. So if you've only just installed After Effects, chances are that you're not going to have the WebM encoder on there, but we need it installed because we need to have that video with a transparent background. Not only that, WebM is a modern um, extension and it compresses video and images very, very small. So we want everything. Uh, we want the smallest possible file size because it's going to reduce the strain on our CPU when we're actually transitioning between the scenes. You know, if I'm loading up a, a gigabyte video file um, compared to a few hundred kilobytes WebM file, you know, it's going to make a notable difference when, when I'm transitioning between, uh, between my scenes, especially if you're transitioning quite often. So I'll leave a link in the, the description. You will probably have to launch your um, After Effects again. Um, that window's just popped up, it just reminded me. Make sure you save your file 
um, because the last thing that I want you to do is get all the way through this and you know it crashes for whatever reason. So um, I'll leave a link down in the description. Go ahead and download the WebM encoder and then relaunch your After Effects and then we're good to go. So once you're there, you will want to click on File, Export and Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. Once you've done that, you're going to have your Adobe Media Encoder window and what you'll see is your queue on the right hand side. As always, if you don't see any of these docs, so click on window and you'll have queue and you'll be able to just place it wherever you want. I always have mine at the top right. We've got the location that the file is going to be saved in and we've got this H.264. If we click on that, now that we've installed our codex, we, we should have the WebM extension. So I'm going to click into that and there's a couple of settings that we need to change. So I'm going to click custom. I'm going to export video. There's no point in me exporting audio because I have no audio in this. I'm going to click on video down here. I'm going to scroll down. Now I could play around with the, uh, the quality. I'm going to leave it as it is because it's, it's quite a small file anyway, but maybe just leave that around 39, 40 ish mark. And then the most important part here is to make sure you include that um, alpha channel. The alpha channel is your transparency. So if you don't do that, you're going to have a, a solid black background. So click on that and click OK. And you're good to go. So just click on the start queue. Finally, you're going to want to open up OBS Studio. It's the exact same for Streamlabs OBS. But in the bottom right, I've got my scene transitions. If for any reason you don't see this, you want to go up to the very top, click on um, tool view docs and scene transitions. From there, you want to click on the little plus and click on stinger. Click OK and you want to find your file. So in our case, we just saved ours in stingers. What this is going to do is the transition point is at what point does 100% of the screen get taken over. So I'm going to set mine to one second. Click OK. And now what we should have is if we click on this layer. Our fake logo transition. So I hope this has been helpful. We have gone through keyframing, positioning, scaling, um, alpha matting our actual logo so it only appears once a layer has gone over it. We've done the, the, the actual setup in OBS. So you are now well on your way to actually going and creating some really cool effects with your, your stingers. Now, for anyone who's got having trouble, I will leave a link in the description so you can just download this file as it is. Um, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to comment down below and I'll get back to everyone as quickly as possible. So until next time, take care.